Welcome to VM Blog's 2021 Mega Series. And today we have the pleasure of having with us Ores Lesuk, who is the solutions engineer at Starwind. And today we're going to be covering the topic of virtualization and cloud computing. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. Nice to meet you. Good to Thank see you, you for this introduction. Yep. Now, can you tell us a little bit about the company and uh, and give us kind of a background? Yeah, sure. So Starwind is basically the storage virtualization pioneer that made its way in the early 2008 with its main product in form of the Starwind iSCSI SAN, which is the software defined storage solution. And now it's known as the Starwind Virtual SAN. So of course, throughout the years, we significantly expanded our product portfolio with various free and paid software products, as well as hardware offerings. And among the most known is the Starwind Virtual SN, especially in the SDS market, in the SMB and Robo segment. And from the hardware offerings, our flagship one is the Starwind Hopic Conversion Appliance. Now, one of the you know topics that everybody's talking about globally is about COVID. Uh, in your opinion, what effect has the COVID pandemic had on virtualization and cloud computing market? It definitely had, and it definitely had a significant impact. Uh, the first thing we noticed as, the, as a storage vendor, uh, we noticed that a lot of companies face the challenge of transitioning their overall IT environment to the remote working and remote operation. So from our perspective, we have seen a large increase in the virtualization desktop environments deployments, as well as stretched clusters. And definitely I should mention the increase in both hybrid cloud and public cloud deployments, since the companies in case of the COVID pandemic or the world uh, did not really need, first of all, to manage all that large on-premises infrastructures. And secondly, hybrid and public clouds were, of course, the convenient options for ensuring remote access for the workers. Now, in your opinion, um, do you think it's on-site infrastructure is safer and more secure than the cloud? And why or why not? Mm. Well, it all depends basically on the expertise of the public cloud provider and of the staff that is working on the on-premises IT infrastructure. Now, public cloud basically has its in, in its name. You're working in the public cloud workspace. So you mostly, also of course not exclusively, rely on the public cloud provider security mechanisms that manage to deploy and establish for your services and applications and data. Now, whether it is more secure than the on-premises environment uh, is a quite a difficult question because no one can tell who has the better expertise, the public cloud provider with huge resources or the on-premises infrastructure of a company. However, the thing is that you have a full control in case of the on-premises environment and depending on your skills, on your expertise, on your professionals working in your team, you can establish the 100% secure on-premises infrastructure. In the cloud, you still get the security, but it's never 100% guaranteed that you are in charge of that security. So you still rely on the public cloud provider. And what are your thoughts on moving from you know, on-premises virtualization in the data center to migrating things over to the cloud and then you know, based on that, what are the benefits to either keeping things local or moving things to the cloud? Mm -hmm. uh, well, definitely both, both approaches have their pros and cons. So speaking of the public cloud, first of all, oh, public cloud is the great option since you can hugely decrease all the hardware infrastructure you previously needed to maintain and administrate because most of the users are working with the services inside the cloud. Of course, you need to do some administration if you are using infrastructure or platform as a service inside the cloud, 
but it still greatly simplifies all the administration and decreases the costs. Plus, public cloud is a great fit for fast to market enrollment of applications and services, since you do not need to start picking up the hardware, picking up the software, then trying to launch it. You just get the necessary resources from the public cloud vendor and you start your application and the service. So it might be critical in a lot of cases where basically your time to market though your product is significantly is significantly increasing comparing to the on-premises infrastructure. The con uh, basically is what we talked just before. It's the security concerns, which still remain in quite a lot of companies. On the on-premises infrastructure, on the other hand, you have to take responsibility for managing, administrating, and maintaining all the hardware resources. So it's all on your own. And while that implies higher costs when it comes to administration expenses and so on, uh, the benefit here is that first of all, of course, the security mechanisms you can establish and control. And secondly, you can match the exact hardware you need for the applications to ensure you get the exact level of performance you need, which might not always be a possible case in, in the public cloud deployments. So when we talk about uh, public versus private cloud, what is your preference and what would you say are the top benefits to selecting one over the other? Uh, well, actually, while both on-premises or private cloud and public cloud have their own pros and cons, the best way actually would be to combine those, to combine the strong sides of the private cloud of the on-premise environment and the strong sides of the public cloud. So from my perspective, making a hybrid cloud solution where you can combine the performance and security of the on-premises infrastructure along with the public cloud flexibility and ability to use on-demand services would be the best approach. So in this way, basically, you do not need to choose one over another because definitely both have their strong sides but you actually combine the best of both worlds. And then I guess talking, uh, keeping in line, talking about public cloud based on your expertise, uh, talk about high availability. Is that something that's required uh, in a public cloud like it might be local? Mm. Well, first of all, um, it should be mentioned that public clouds and public cloud providers ensure strong security mechanisms, their own basically availability mechanisms, such as redundant data centers across various regions to ensure applications and services uptime. So for most of the customers, that might be just enough because it's, different, it's definitely a strong technological mechanism. Uh, on the other hand, even the largest public cloud providers had outages in the data centers and regions, so leaving the applications and services unavailable for some portion of time. So that's actually a question, how long of a downtime you can tolerate and if you can tolerate it at all. If you want to make and want to ensure maximum security, maximum uptime for your applications, then yes, definitely you can combine the resiliency and the availability the public cloud provides with the high availability that provides Starwind, for example, virtual ascent by replicating storage between instances in different regions. So thus, again, you combine the strongest points and ensure the maximum uptime for your applications and business continuity. And how do you see the uh, workload distribution between on-premise and cloud in coming in the next couple of years? Mm. So definitely, I believe a lot of companies will be moving their workloads to public cloud space. That's, that's what is already happening. So that's not, not a secret. We do not need to sort of predict this. That this is already what is taking place. And that's the wise strategy because public cloud is a perfect fit for, first of all, Active Directory, 
on-demand services that should be deployed fast and have to and must have fast time to market deployment and of course file service and light to medium workload applications that i believe is something that public cloud can effectively deal with and provide the decent performance uh, the most performance demanding applications will still tend to remain on the on-premises infrastructure since basically that's the place where we can pick and ensure the proper architecture, the proper hardware, and as a result, what is the most significant performance required for such type of workload demanding applications and services. And lastly, uh, is there any chance we could get a, take a look at the product itself and maybe show us a, a little bit about how Starwind works? Yeah, definitely. Okay, so what we have today is the common deployment of Starwind Virtual Ascend. We have a compact vSphere cluster comprised of just two nodes filled with local storage. Now, how Starwind functions is that each node hosts what we call Starwind storage controller, which is basically the Linux-based virtual machine. The storage is provisioned inside the Starwind storage controller and further replicated between the two VMs. If we check our management, we can see that inside the Starwind Management Console, which is the main tool in this case to manage and administrate Starwind highly available storage, we have our two Linux-based VMs connected and already the device replicated in active-active mode between the two VMs and provisioned back to the vSphere already in form of the highly available data store. So if we check the iSCSI portion, we can see the Starwind iSCSI disk available on both of the nodes and having, of course, redundant passes to both servers and already hosting the HA BMFS data store with a couple of our demo VMs. Now, VMs in our case are running on the E6i02, and the main task of Starwind here is to provide the high availability, basically, and the failover of the VMs in case of a node failure. Now, if a node fails, and that's exactly what I want to show, the virtual machines will be failed over to the active node since there is still available storage from the remaining Starwind storage controller and the remaining ESXi node. Now, once the node fails, the VMs get failover and continue running on the remaining ESXi node. Now, if we check the Starwind management console, we can see that something went wrong with the partner storage controller. And no secret and no wonder, that's because the second ESXi node already went offline. So if we check our vCenter, we can see part of the not notifications already arriving and the status is changed to not responding and correspondingly for the second Starwind storage controller. But the first ESXi node still remains online and we still have our storage active and available on the first side. So if we check our disk and our data store, we will see that it is still available. The passes to the partner are, of course, offline, and the virtual machines are getting restarted and already running on the first ESXi node. And that's basically what stands behind the Starwind software, the form of Starwind Virtual Sand a simple but yet highly reliable and rock solid product that just runs on the background of your infrastructure while you're still just dealing with your workloads without having to get any additional learning experience with Starwind. And as a result, increasing and providing the uptime for your applications 
and services. Hey, that was real cool. Uh, and I know for, as we wrap things up, everyone who's just watched uh, that great demo is going to want to learn more. Where should uh, where should folks go to uh, learn more about the things that we talked about and the things that you showed uh, here today? Well, we have quite a decent collection of various articles of industry experts on the Stowen blog. So that would be the first thing to check just as well as for the Stowen virtual send deployments in the on-premises and in the public cloud environments and the general practices overall for setting overall infrastructure in the public cloud and in the private clouds also. Great, we'll put uh, a couple of links to those things uh, down below in the show notes. And, uh, and then let me just end by saying, you know, thank you again for uh, speaking with VM blog and taking part in the, the mega series and sharing your knowledge with, uh, with all our viewers. It's, it was great to speak with you. And thank you, gentlemen. And I would also like to thank all the viewers who attend this video. Thank you for your time. And I wish everyone good luck and to stay safe and healthy. And the same to you. Thank you. Appreciate Goodbye. it. Goodbye. All right. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to see more from our cloud technology partners, please hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and if you want to get notified next time we post a video, please hit the subscribe and the bell notification. Very important.